This is the Domain Magnet Show, where you'll learn everything you need to know about buying, optimizing, and selling online businesses with your host, Michael Baraslavsky. Hello, welcome to another episode of the Domain Magnet Podcast. Today we have with us Shane Dutka. Shane has sold an affiliate lead gen website for $1.1 million. And then he also sold many other websites that he built for some similar and lower amounts. And this is actually my first time speaking to Shane. So I'm excited to chat about affiliate SEO and learn some new things as well. Hi, Shane. Hi, how's it going? It's good. Well, it's good to meet you. So you mentioned that you've started SEO about six years ago, right? Yeah, around 2016, I started, I guess, yeah, SEO, I guess you can say, it. yeah, around 2016. And what, what uh, how did you get into that or what drew you into that? Yeah, I mean, it was sort of out of desperation, uh, actually. I my So my kind of arc and like how I got into the whole digital marketing scene, I previously I was an accountant, did a very traditional route, um, studied business, was going to do that pretty much. And... Um, I wanted to start something on the side, a digital business, and it was an e-commerce business selling bow ties. I invested like fifty thousand dollars with the bow ties into a website and like inventory. Didn't have any money left over for advertising, and out of desperation, I got good at SEO to drive organic traffic to the site and actually make my money back. <laughs> so, nice. kind of a weird path, but yeah. Uh, that's that's a good uh, good motivation to to be out of money and desperate. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those, uh, I like to equate it to like burn your bridges, you know, it's like, or burn your boats, whatever it is. Like, basically you have to be successful or else. <laughs> yeah. And how did this site go? Did you make a profit out of it later? Did you sell it? Uh, profit, that's a strong word. <laughs> so but the site's called bethebowtieguy.com. It was my original sort of foray into digital marketing. I it made, you know, at its peak, maybe two to three K a month in bow tie sales driven all, all from organic SEO. But uh, I sold that site in 2019 with all of the inventory I bought and I broke even by like, probably like the skin of my teeth on the total cost of everything. So happy about that. Uh, pretty much paid for my education, I guess you could say. Okay, it looks like it's now... Uh belongs to a company based in Indianapolis. Looks nice, the site looks good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's still still what I basically hasn't, they haven't really touched it much. They just kind of operate it very passively because it's an you know, organic site. So if you click around the blog, you'll still see me in random places. So a little bit of a relic on the internet, you know. Hmm. Very cool, and what was your second uh, next project after that? Yeah. So I, after seeing some really great results, not, you know, not great, but like good enough results, I'm like, oh dang, like this SEO thing, it works. Like how can I double, triple down on this and, you know, potentially change my career? Cause again, I'm still working as an accountant, selling bow ties on the side, you know, slinging them at night, uh, packing, literally packing bow ties to people in like sometimes Dubai. So it was crazy. I was like, okay, what niche could I get into that would support, have more broad appeal, this bow ties, you know, there's, there's not that many people searching for bow tie information. So I, you know, did some brainstorming, did a little bit of market research, you know, SEMrush, Ahrefs, just looking for what niches could be, op you know, opportunities. And uh, pest control was one that sort of caught my eye because of how much people hate bugs. And I figured there's a lot of things you could talk about around that. So I was like, okay, there's definitely broad appeal here. And, um, you know, there's a lot of products in the pest control industry, so you can promote a lot of different things and sell those products through affiliate links and whatnot. So that was like, all right, I was like, all right, pest control seems like the next frontier for me. And I looked at the, I looked at the um, competitors and I thought all the content was kind of crappy, like shitty content. So I was like, I could probably do better. <laughs> okay. You know? So you built a content website about pest control and... Was it, was it general? Did it target a specific uh, geolocation? No, it was a broad national site targeting terms like best bed bug traps. Best bed bug traps would be an example term that we would go after. And, um, you know, people hate bed bugs. So we'll buy that stuff and it'll make money. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, uh, what, what do people actually spend on, on, on something like that? 
do they like buy a small product or do they order a, like get a person to come in and get rid of bugs? Yeah, so both, right? So the, the pest control industry is kind of fun in that you can have you have a lot of products DIY pest control, so you can sell the products, like you can buy them yourself, <clears throat> like ant traps and stuff, and you know that's DIY. But you could also obviously call an exterminator. So there's a lead gen component attached to uh, to the to the niche. So I was like, oh yeah, so I could sell products and I could maybe sell leads, and that's like how we make money with the site. And uh, mostly the site was. Uh, affiliate centric or product centric in the beginning and then later we brought the leads and lead generation in because i got basically we tapped out all the major keywords you would go after <clears throat> in the product for products so i was like all right how do we grow this from here well lead gen you know pretty much and uh that's kind of how i took the site from like i started in 2017 so like timeline the bow tie thing was 2016 pest control thing 2017 and that's when that started Okay, very good. So you started in 2017. And how long did it take you to sort of become profitable enough to, to make it, you know, to get good money or maybe to quit your job? In 2018, so about a year. <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah, 2018 is when we crossed 10, well, I crossed 10K. I don't, I wasn't working with anybody else. It was just me. And um, it was a, it was a completely brand new site, non-expired domain, fresh domain. And uh just yeah nights and weekends pest control content every night and I did all my own link building did all my own writing i literally wrote the first 40 articles of that pest control site i am probably one of the most experienced pest control operators that and doesn't actually do pest control because <laughs> i just wrote so much about it you learn obviously right so you know i make a joke but like every time we go to a hotel my wife's like check the beds like you know what you're looking for right <laughs> I'm like, yes, I, I can tell if there's bed bugs here. Um, so that was really cool. Yeah, so 2018 is when when it started to make over 10K a month on average and allowed me to quit my job, yeah. And was this mostly affiliate income or, or lead gen income? It was actually a mixture of affiliate revenue and display ads. So, uh, it, you know, display ads are obviously extremely easy ways to, a way to monetize um, anything pretty much on the internet with eyeballs. Mm -hmm. So it's it was definitely part of the revenue mix and it was probably like 60% affiliate and 40% display ads. All right. Very cool. And do you remember what, what kind of traffic did it have at the time to, to get to 10 K? Uh, probably like 200, 300,000 a month or something like that. Is that um, unique. So page views. Probably unique. So All right. Very cool. That. So that's, yeah. uh, so that's pretty good. So, so that's like, like 300,000 unique. So it's, to to ten thousand dollars, so that would be like an RPM of well, if, if that were page views, maybe you had half a million page views. I'm just curious, what kind of RPM is there in that niche? Yeah. Area? So that yeah, I'm just pulling numbers out of my like twenty dollars. Yeah, so like it, it seems reasonable. Twenty dollars RPM, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it was reasonable, and I yeah, it was. Um, it might even be a little bit lower, but yeah, it was. The traffic was starting to spike because pest control is extremely seasonal. Yeah. Um, you know, basically May, June, July, it's like just spikes like a rocket, you know. And then obviously December, January, it goes like super low. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, and so, so when you after that, I understand you started doing some lead gen. How did you how did you get lead gen? Like how, who did you sell these leads? How do you collect them? And how yeah. did it affect your revenue? So there's a, a service called Networks. They are sort of an off-the-shelf uh, lead gen aggregator. They basically go out and find pest control companies, and then I just use their widgets on my site. Obviously, I'm just one person. I'm not going to call a pest control company and be like, hey, you want to buy leads? Like, <laughs> yeah. um, It's just easier to sell leads to an aggregator like as a solar operator. you know. What, what, is, what is the company called again? Uh, Networks, N-E-T-W-R-R, N-E-T, WORX.com. Networks yeah. with an X instead of K and C. Yep. K and S. Okay. And so how did it work? You, you put a widget and they take care and it's all only in US, right? But covers all the states. Exactly. Yeah. They, right. they have a pretty good footprint. Their widgets, I mean, they're basic, obviously. They don't look anything like anything special. Uh, so I was able to, I mean, again, the majority of the revenue, even in its peak, 
peak revenue stages came from affiliate display ads. The lead gen component, because it was an aggregator, uh, the deal wasn't amazing. You know what I'm saying? Like you only get paid like between 10 and maybe 20 bucks a lead where I know they're making like 40, 50, to $60 a lead. You know what I'm saying? On my, on my leads. So it did, again, at the end of the day, it was lead gen was probably like secondary to affiliate. Okay. I thought that lead gen became the main, the main source of revenue at some point. It, no, it, it wasn't. Yeah, it definitely wasn't. Uh, mainly because the site was predominantly around built around products and promoting you know products in the, in the niche and the lead gen component basically the way i did it was i monetize like your you know your articles around best bed bug traps i would have call to actions for people who just wanted to like get get done for them in line with all the content so you would show up on the article, you'd be like, oh yeah, the three best picks, whatever. And then you keep scrolling and there's call to actions. So it was a way to increase the RPMs on the overall site without being like a true legion site. You know what I mean? Okay, that sounds good. And so, so back in uh, 2018, you got to $10,000 and uh, like two, 300,000 uniques. And what, what happened next with the site? Did it grow further? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, so March of 20, oh, March of 19, March of 2019, it benefited greatly from a Google update and it went from on average, you know, 10K, 15K a month to like 50K a month. It like skyrocketed. Oh. So that was great. <laughs> that was that was a good day. Uh, it's always nice to be the benefic uh, the benefactor of a Google update, right? Never, never the opposite. But yeah, yeah I mean, the site was just built well, it had strong links, uh, you know, good SEO, good art site architecture. You know, hub and spoke, classics, you know, setup, and I think it just it just benefited from a lot of that, and ultimately Google rewarded it, and we were you know did did something like fifty you know between forty and sixty k for about three or four months straight, and then I started to look to sell it because at this point you know I'm basically like okay time to reinvest and build other sites right because what's this sort of my, the way I look at it, right? Once a site becomes so big in your portfolio, it's like, okay, I got to like rebalance the portfolio, right? So you don't have so much risk tied up in one site that if it were to go down, you know, you're, you're not in a good position anymore, right? Especially when the stock is so high, it was like just the trajectory on that site was just going to the moon. So I felt like I could sell it, you know, when the stock is super high. And ultimately that's what I ended up doing in uh, September of 2019. I sold it. Uh, actually, at FB International, one of the brokers, pretty popular broker that sells websites. Yeah, very good. So you, and and how much did you get for it? Uh, the deal was one point. I think you were. I think one point one million was the final deal size. Yeah. Okay, one point one. Was it all cash, or was there some sort of earnout agreement or some? Kind yeah, of there was. Payments? It was majority cash, but there was, I think, like. 20 or 30 percent earnout, um, performance based. So obviously, like a, a buyer of a site wants to balance their risk too, right? Yeah. So they, you know, usually go for earnouts, especially deals that big. Um, you know, it's not that big, but it's like for the buyers, it's big for them, right? So they went with a performance earnout for over 18 months, I believe, or 24 months, something like that, and. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a pretty straightforward deal, nothing too complicated, and uh, I ended up being kind of biz, not business partners, but friends with the people who bought it because they are digital marketers like myself, but they have a, a portfolio that they are operating. You know. All right, very good. And have you looked up the site recently? How how did it do in all the recent updates since 2018? Is it still doing well? <clears throat> yeah, no, it's it's. It's not as big as it was. I think it normalized. I think it was probably overperforming for where it was, which is part of the reason why I sold it. Uh, but it normalized back, you know, maybe like half of what it was doing at its peak. And, uh, you know, you can check Ahrefs, like, or I guess you can't because I didn't tell you the domain name. But yeah, I mean, it, 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 it came down, right? So Google did take it away, right? <laughs> you know, um, but it was totally fine, right? At the end of the day, everybody made money. Um, nobody was upset. They grew the site. They still made a bunch of money. And, uh, and yeah. Okay, very cool. 
Well, that's a so that's that's a very successful deal, and especially for a website that you've grown yourself from scratch over just what like a year and a half, basically before you sold it here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think about eighteen. Oh, I say eighteen months because it was 2017, 2018. Cool. Yeah, probably like twenty months or so. And uh, can you tell me a bit more about what what you've done to grow it? So obviously you've you've wrote a lot of the content. And uh, tell me more about links. Like, what did you do for link building? What kind of backlinks yeah. did you get for it? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, so I did write the 30 to 40 first pieces, but then I hired writers, obviously, because mm -hmm. like the site ended up around 400 pieces of content at its, you know, when I sold it. And, uh, you know, I'm a big, so I'll talk, I guess I'll talk about links first, right? So links, um, you know, the, the, the strategy for links was like one really big quality piece of content that I thought was like, just like amazing in terms of information and really adding value to a, to a niche. One, one article, I'll just, I don't even care, but it was about, it's so pest control, right? Diatomaceous earth is like a pest control powder that kills bugs, right? This was an article that I wrote myself because I knew this would be a really popular link building article, right? So anyway, I wrote this article myself. It was like maybe like a 5,000 word like trashing of other people's content. Cause I was like this piece of, it, it's sort of like, you know how you have um, a fad around a health product, you know, where it doesn't actually do anything, yeah. but like people say it's amazing. So I basically said that <laughs> I was like, I was like, this stuff is a pest control product being touted as like this health thing. That was like the premise behind my whole, whole article. So I wrote that piece and promoted it and it crushed, you know, like it got links from like apartment therapy. It got links from like, you know, just a bunch of big sites, right? So, and so, I just it, was kind of, so it was an article about a popular product that you kind of exposed that it's not actually that good? Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. So it was very like controversial. And I, in my experience, controversial tends to be interesting you know people yeah. want to they want to link they want to read it they want to be like oh yeah if they really agree with it they'll link to it like gangbusters if they don't agree with it they'll just you know email you back saying this is bullshit you know <laughs> but yeah. um it ended up working out pretty well was it was uh, it a brand that you trashed or was it just some popular type of product it's just the product yeah it was okay. it was other websites also like touting it as amazing i was like here's what it is here's what the actual things like it can be used three different ways. You can eat it, get, they get diet to make sure you can eat it, you can use it for your pool and you can kill bugs with it. <laughs> so, but they're different products, right? If on the shelves, they're different, right? There's different in ingredients inside of it, but the websites that were pushing it, they didn't talk about this, right? So I just highlighted that and I was like, there, there's people actually getting in trouble and like having sickness because of this. So I just picked a topic and went really deep on it and it was very controversial. So I was able to attract a lot of links that are hard to get, you know what I'm saying? All right, very good. So that sounds like an amazing uh, way to build links. Yeah, you write about something that's controversial and then you, did, did you also do some outreach to different news publications? And like, Honestly, I probably didn't do enough outreach to, to news mm -hmm. publications, but I did push it pretty hard. I So what I did was, I'm going to get tactical for a second. Basically, I grabbed all the keywords that had diatomaceous earth in them out of Google auto suggest, right? So it was like 200, 300 keywords, maybe even more, maybe like a couple thousand. Um, and I use Scrapebox to do that sort of at, um, at scale. Then I would scrape all those keywords for all the URLs that were talking about the product. And then I would, you know, do dupe and like filter all the lists down. So it's like a nice tight list. And then I would just pitch, I would basically all of them, I'd be like, hey, I, I see you're talking about this product. It, you know, based on, I, we just, you know, issued this report on my website, it, you know, these three things were, nobody's talking about them. People are getting sick. You know, uh, you should, you know, if you, you know, if you want to save your visitors from getting sick, you should link to my resource as a, as an additional resource for your, for your readers. And I did that every month for 12 straight months <laughs> because people keep, um, people keep publishing new content on the topic. Right. So I would do that. And I would also use like Google, um, uh, uh, notifications or whatever it's called, Google, um, you know, they'll just ping you if they see the keyword in the, in Google, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I had that notification set on. So anytime somebody created a piece of content on that topic, I would email them and be like, Hey, I see you just <laughs> published an article on this, on this topic. 
you should link to me <laughs> because, because it's not safe. So it worked out really well. And people will be like, how did you find me? I just published it yesterday. I'd be like, don't worry. <laughs> I found so good. it's fine. Yeah. And uh, was that like your main link building strategy for the site? Did, did that bring the most backlinks? Yeah, it was definitely the primary way of building links. It was just finding other topics, like another example. So mosquitoes, mosquito bites, right? Yeah, everybody gets mosquito bites. What I, and another article I did was I did every single possible way people have talked about getting rid of mosquito bites. So like banana peels, hot spoon, cold spoon, ice cubes, you know, like talcum powder, like bat, like just like pinching it, like. I did it as a super long guide on like every single way you could get rid of a mosquito bite, something like way out in the field, something that are actually like proven. And I promoted that and that it was not as controversial, but it worked because um, it was just super interesting. I would lead with like, Hey, you know, we just did this guide on mosquito bites and, you know, pretty much the three, you know, 43 different ways people around the internet have been getting rid of them. Some of these ways are kind of crazy, like banana peels or like, you know, whatever it is. And I got links from some big authority sites that, again, don't give out links. They're like, oh, this would be awesome. Like super interesting piece, cool take on, an, on a subject that a lot of people talk yeah. about, but it's kind of old. Everyone does the same thing. So you got to kind of come up with something new, you know? Very cool. Well, what was your conclusion? I'm very curious. What, what actually works best against mosquito bites? <laughs> what was the best? Honestly, yeah. uh, I honestly don't remember. <laughs> I think uh, oh, no. I, if I had to recall, probably just like an antihistamine. Honestly, oh, maybe, maybe you should read your own article again. <laughs> I should go back. I should be like, oh, I gotta, I gotta brush up my mosquito knowledge. You know. So we get all the mosquitoes here. I'm uh, living in Chiang Mai in Thailand, and it's um, oh nice. Yeah, it's, it's uh, close I was there. to nature. I was, there. I, I was there in 2019, the last mm -hmm. time that. You know the SEO uh, chain my SEO conference was on, so oh yeah, very good. So so I guess I'll have to wait for you to read the article again and let me know. <laughs> yeah, what I'll print it out. I'll leave it on your desk. <laughs> for sure. Um, all right, very good. So so when you like, if if you had to look up the backlinks for that website, would would those two articles basically have all the backlinks, like eighty percent of all the backlinks, not, uh, not going no, to the main was... page, but like those articles. No, mm -hmm. it was definitely more dispersed. More dispersed. Um, they did have a lot of links, no doubt, but they, it was definitely dispersed. Like I would try to do one piece like that every two to three months, you know what I'm saying? And uh, that would sort of be the backlink strategy, you know, and mm -hmm. it worked. And then of course, actually sending the emails, getting the contacts, like that's all sort of important in a strong link building program. Like you got to be able to do that and you got to be able to get into the inbox, right? If you hit the spam box, like it doesn't matter how good your mm. content is, you know? All right. Very good. So, so then uh, the strategy was, was mainly to, to build good content and, and then get links by being a bit controversial. So, so you did not really do a lot of uh, like buying links or so like using PBNs at that time, as I recall, PBNs were quite popular. Not so yeah. much now, but at the time, yeah. Did you do that? No PBNs. Yeah, no PBNs. Um, I didn't buy any links for like the first 18 months or maybe 12 months. Um, and then I started to be very particular with who I, who I did buy links from. If I thought the site was just trash and like, yeah, $25, I'll put, I'm like, no, obviously I'm not going to buy a $25 link, right? Like your links are probably sold to everybody on the internet, right? So um, I was very particular with who I would accept, who I would pay uh, the link to get placed on. You know, I would look at their backlink profile. I would see who are they linking to, how many links do they link out from. I would look at a ratio of like uh, referring domains to outbound links. And if, if it looks out of whack, then it would be like no go. Um, I look at a lot of different things to just make sure that, you know, the site, if I were to get a link on this site, I wanted a link. Site, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't a link that I wouldn't be proud of. <laughs> very good. So basically, very, very kind of white hat ish. Approach. Yeah, I mean, yeah, white hat, pretty much down the line. All right, cool. So you sold that site, and and by the way, did you quit your job during during running that site? After you got to 10k, you no more no more accounting. That's it. 
during yep, the pro for the, the summer of 2018. I'll remember I walked into my office and I was like, Hey, Hey boss, I gotta, I gotta sit down with you. <laughs> she's like, she's like, Oh, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. So, uh, I started a website around pest control and, um, yeah, it's making more money than my current job. So I gotta leave. <laughs> She's like, what? what? She had a lot of questions. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> um, all right, very cool. And what, what did you do next? Did you build some more websites? How did they go? Uh, yeah, no, I definitely built a lot of websites. I had a playbook, you know, once you do one or two, in my case, uh, you start to see what works. You see what doesn't work and you just do more of what works. I mean, it's, it's pretty tried and true, not overcomplicated. And uh, I started a... Uh, a number of sites in the painting niche, baby niche, coffee niche, jewelry niche, um, fitness niche. You know, I, I kind of got into big, a bunch of niches and I started running the playbook and I started another site in 2019 of, oh, so it was still when I had pe pe uh, pest control site. It was in February of 2019. I don't know what it is about February, but I like starting sites in February. <laughs> Maybe it's a uh, New Year's resolution. I don't know. But I started another site, um, a jewelry site in February 2019, and I grew that to um, about 30K of revenue. And um, it must have been like around the same time, around 18 months when I when it started hitting its peak, you know? And um, I ended up selling that site into Empire Flippers cap Capital Program. So oh. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that, listens to your podcast, but um, I was so. I'll probably get into it in a minute, but I had started uh, my role at Three Ships as an SEO director, and I wanted to sort of shrink my portfolio so I can focus on that role. And the site was sort of sitting in my portfolio, making really great money, but I didn't have any time to focus on it. So I was worried that if I didn't focus on it or put any effort into it, it was going to decline. So I ended up selling it. All right. Very cool. Um, nice. And so, yeah, tell me more about Three Ships. So it looks like they, they do something similar to, to what we do and to what, what um, they, they buy sites, they grow them. And yep. first of all, how did you come across them and what, why did you decide to actually pick up a job? Why not just continue what works well, building more sites, setting them? I know, right? I get that question a lot. Uh, yeah. It's a very good question. And I think a couple of reasons. Uh, the first reason how I came across them, um, well, let me ask that, miss that, answer that question first. I came across them in a, in a, in a private SEO community called Traffic Think Tank. You may have heard of it. You may have, you know, maybe your listeners have heard of it. Um, and there was a job posting by somebody who worked there that they were looking for an SEO director in, for their home team for basically websites that focus on home sites. Obviously, I had pest control experience, thought it'd be a fit for me. I was like, oh, yeah, let me throw my hat in the ring and see let's see if this is a good idea, right? To join up with these guys. Also, they, uh, they're at their directors and above get equity, right? So yes, I'm not an entrepreneur, but I'm still, you know, a partner in the business and I have a lot of upside to be gained from the growth of the business. So it felt like an entrepreneur. I felt like an entrepreneur still in the business, right? More of an intrapreneur. So when I was going through an interview process, you know, I, I, I talked to pretty much a lot of the management at the time you know, this is back in 20, 2020, right during COVID, right? And, um, you know, they're based in Raleigh and they're like, you know, just tell me about their business, like what they got going on. You know, at the time they were doing something like 50 million a year or maybe 40 million a year in, re in affiliate revenue. Like that's just pure affiliate, right? So I was like, holy cow, like this is yeah. like big leagues, right? This is like on another level of affiliate marketing, right? And, and, and being SEO in a, in a company like this, I would learn a lot. I would learn a lot about business. I learned a lot about management. I learned about uh, growing a, a company like this, an enterprise level company. So I was like, there's a lot to learn here. And there's a lot to, uh, I could level up a couple of notches if I just stick around for a couple of years. And, you know, I, I, I would obviously, I would add value as a, an SEO with a really deep track record. And, you know, they would get value from, uh, from me. Um, but at the vice versa, I would get value from them because, hey, like I'm getting some equity in the business decent salary, whatever. Um, but I'm also learning from really smart people that get the game, you know, they get the affiliate game and they are operating at a much, much bigger scale than, you know, we're talking like 
sites that do one site that could do like eight, nine figures a year. Right. So like, that's just how, I mean, right now that's what I'm saying, right back then they probably had some smaller sites, but like you're thinking like the trajectory. So that was kind of my rationale, like why I was like, you know, yes, I could have built more affiliate sites and like build a couple more like 10 K sites per month, which great, but like, I'm trying to go bigger, you know, <laughs> like, how do I get even bigger than that? How do I get, how do I get to like the million dollar a month site, you know? Very cool. And do they operate their own sites or do they also work with customers? They do, they do both. Uh, no, no customers. They're not an agency. So they were an agency and they became, so because affiliate marketing is so profitable, they got rid of their agency and they're like, forget the agency thing. Like we're going to go do affiliate because <laughs> it's so profitable. Uh, which agree, right? Uh, so they were you see not anymore. They they own and operate a bunch like a. I mean, it's all over their website, right? Threeships.com. Uh, you can see it for yourself. All the websites that they operate, and the uh, majority are owned and operated. Some sites we just operate through joint ventures, um, but mostly owned and operated type sites. That um, yeah, I mean that's just usually how it works. Okay, very cool. Yeah, so I'm going to the website now, threeships.com with a dash in between. And there is a few different websites that they have in their portfolio. There is a house method. And yep. by the way, you, are you, is your role just operating one of the websites or a portfolio or like all of them? So I've, I've worked on probably all of them at this point <laughs> uh, in some way or another. Um, House Method, yeah, that was one of their flagship sites that they started. They actually started that site themselves. Yeah. And they um, have been growing that site, you know, uh, so that's a really cool site they're working on. I am not on that site in particular, but it's um, it's definitely one of the sites sort of indicative of what, you know, what they're working on. And uh, and yeah, I mean, we're, we're continuing continuing to like, scour the market for really great deals, really great sites. We're pretty much a buy only type of place now. Uh, not, we're not doing much incubation. It just takes too long, yeah. you know? Uh, so we, plus we have all the know-how that we can take a site that's probably under monetized, you know, has a lot of SEO potential, but doesn't really rank for anything, you know? So that's more of our posture these days. Yeah, absolutely. That's the same conclusion we came to as well after some time. Um, We've been doing it for about 16 years now. And, and, and uh, what I've learned early on is it just takes time to build a new site. It's much easier to buy and have someone else kind of invest that first year or so into getting things together and getting the first articles yep. and getting it, yeah, getting it to be a proven method as well. Because many sites, they never actually work. And may ha maybe you had that experience too, that often you, you build a new website and you spend the time, the effort, and it just doesn't work. It just doesn't bring traffic and you might not know exactly why, or maybe you do yep. know, but that just that, that nature of SEO, that sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And you just have to like have it, have it spread it around. But then yep. you buy an existing site, you know that it already works because it's already making revenue. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, hit the nail on the head. You just, there's yeah. less, there's, it's a different kind of risk, right? You can be working on something for a year. It makes no traffic, it gets no traffic. If you buy a site, obviously there's downside risk. It goes to zero, Google updates, whatever. But, you know, I think you just have to be, your due diligence just has to be really good. When you buy a site, you just need to dig in, get, get the skeletons out of the closet. Like what, how did you build links? You know, dig into the backlink profile. And if it looks good, then usually you're 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 okay you know obviously there's always exceptions though yeah very cool so i'm just looking at your different websites that that they have now i am on sleepopolis.com sleepopolis.com and the sites look very clean it's like very nice there is like no ads just affiliate links and stuff and there is yep. what looks like custom made pictures and the themes all looks very clean and simple but I'm seeing there is a lot of affiliate content. Most of the articles I click to, they seem to promote some affiliate products, have some affiliate reviews. I'm curious, do you do you watch that you have a lower percentage of, of affiliate review pages? Do you um, do you think that's important to have like less than half of your pages with affiliate links or affiliate reviews? Yeah. 
I, again, I don't work on Sivopolis, but my, my take on your question, I definitely have a, an opinion on it. Um, they, I do know that they produce a ton of informational content. Maybe it's not as featured as the affiliate content is. Um, I do, I, I don't know that I'm hundred percent convinced Google will be like you over monetize the site, therefore penalty. I think that it's tricky. And I think that the site does have a bunch of informational. I know the guys who work on that site and they are aware of all of those details. I think that generally speaking, I am in your camp. Like we should have informational where it's like, you know, lower monetization, you know, internal links across the board all over, you know, standard, you know, hub and spoke approach. And obviously, you know, you're more affiliate centric content and hyper focused around money keywords, et cetera. I don't think, I think with enough links, these problems go by the wayside. I think once it, once a site, so sleep Bobbles has a ton of links, right. And the site's been around forever. So I think that the risk is pretty low for that type of problem to kind of creep up on them, but it's definitely something that I keep my eye on. Mm. So for example, another website I'm looking at right now is mattressadvisor.com. Uh, have you worked yep. on that one? No, I haven't. Okay. So, so this I'm, I'm seeing pretty much everything is affiliate content. I just, I can't find any purely informational articles. So like pretty much every article has some links affiliate products, but it's done in a very clean and nice way. What I noticed is that it's done in a way that it kind of makes sense for what the visitor would be looking for, because if a visitor goes and looks for like a Casper mattress reviews or a Liso or Helix or whatever other brands are, they would probably want to know what the price is or how to buy it. So I guess it would make sense, right? If a user, like you got to give the user what they're looking for. That's that's the main purpose of the yeah. page. So like all of these pages, they, they yeah. are titled like best mattress for seniors, best mattress for kids and so on. And I guess that, yeah. that, that implies that there would be an affiliate link. Maybe you, yeah, maybe there yeah, is just, agree. Yeah, maybe maybe. There is just like not many topics that would be of interest with that purely informational about mattresses. Like they're meeting the intent of the user really well. And it's not, it's in a way that it's not over the top, right? It's like in a way that's clean, the UX makes sense. Um, it's not spammy, like people are getting what they're looking for. I think they're probably erring on the side of safer. Like there's a difference between what they have and like a ton of ads and like mm. affiliate links all the way at the top and like not a lot of actual tangible quality content, which I think is like all the way on the other side of the spectrum, right? Yeah. If you're thinking like totally unmonetized, totally monetized. so. It's definitely a dance for sure. Okay. Well, now I think I realize the, my omission because I see that they have over a thousand articles total on that website, Mattress Advisor, and there is hundreds of articles that are purely informational. They are just kind of hidden from the menu. So they are maybe like a little bit more levels deeper, but if you yeah. Google them, you just see there's a lot of different articles with no affiliate links and yeah. what looks like custom made pictures and so on. So they are just yeah. not featured on the main menu as much. Is that, yeah. is that a strategy is that a, uh, I mean, a, a strategy yeah. that you like feature the, the affiliate articles that drive the most sales on the, on the main menus? I mean, pretty much. I mean, at the end of the day, they're just trying to maximize the revenue of a visitor, right? Like if they create pathways to informational content where somebody can't be monetized, then they're going to lose value, right? The revenue is going to drop because like that person may have clicked a different article that has links, right? Obviously. So I think, I think the spirit of the layout is definitely to maximize revenue. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just reduce any possible channels to like lower value content. Uh, and probably if you were to go to those informational articles, there's channels back to the best, you know, the, the make the money content, right? Um, just because that's how the state makes money, right? All right, very cool. Uh, so tell us more about your, what, what's your actual job there? What's your, what, what is it that you mainly do? 
I, uh, so I run, when, when I, so the sites that I operate, I am a uh, pretty much full stack sort of SEO, CRO, um, conversion, you know, monetization person, right? Like I basically took my playbook from my own personal days, brought it to three ships and apply it to all the sites that I work on. And my job right now is growing, you know, the sites I work on, but I have a team. So I basically manage a team, like a link building team and an SEO team. And then there's an edit, there's usually an editorial team that has, um, that has their own, like a team of like writers and editors, right? So usually these three teams <laughs> will attach themselves to one site or multiple sites, depending on the structure and we just grow them, right? Um, the size of the team, the team that I'm on right now is about, I manage maybe like seven people total. And we just are hiring two more SEOs and we have total three link builders. And then we have a zero person. So about I think six right now Well, it actually was, was for six. Now it's five. We're going to add two more. So it's seven. The editorial team, that's like, it's like 20 people because there's so much content, right? Plus contractors. So my job is to maximize the revenue per visitor, make sure all the pages rank and maximize rank, uh, keyword strategy. What's the next hundred pages we're going to produce? Why is it going to make an ROI? When's the ROI going to show up? Is it going to be 30 days, three months, a year? Um, how does that, how, what's the site going to look like when you add a hundred pages? Is how are they going to link? Like, that's all me to like think it through and then propagate that strategy down to our SEO team or editorial team. And then the link building team then builds links to the high value pages and or just builds like links to topically relevant pages, right? For domain authority. So that's kind of in a nutshell what I work on day to day. And a, we're very much a performance-based business. So we, every single day, we look at the numbers. Where is the money coming from? Like which pages, um, how much, was, how much was last week? How much is this week? Why is it down? Why is it up? <laughs> so we are hyper-focused around the numbers, which is, I'm a numbers guy, accountant, and, you know, in my past. So it makes total sense for me uh, to be in on that. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the, uh, that's the day-to-day, -day, you know, like, yeah, I'm happy to go into more detail about specific things we work on and maybe like different things like that. All right. Very good. Uh, so, so you look at, you look at optimizing everything, optimizing conversions and, uh, are all your sites affiliate? Do you ever do sites with the ad monetized? Uh, no, uh, that's a lie. We do ads. Sorry. We do ads. Um, but it's definitely secondary. It's like a bolt on. It's like almost like how we justify not affiliate content. So when we produce affiliate, not when we produce informational content, you need a business case, right? Like, it's not just, oh yeah, let's make it, you know, like, why not? And one business case is we'll make our money back on ads, right? The second one is links, right? Obviously we're going to build it. We're going to build links to it. It's going to be more linkable than affiliate centric content. And then the third business case is topical relevance, right? If we're trying to build out topical relevance in a category, you know, a new category, I don't know, HVAC, for example, we might be like, oh yeah, this website has no content on HVAC. We need some content on HVAC um, to build topical relevance on a site and then also help with internal linking and that sort of thing. So that's generally how we approach informational content and that's how ads kind of bolt on, but it's definitely secondary for sure. Okay, and since you are focused on numbers so much, what, what kind of RPM do you strive for? What, what do you strive to make Per, per view, per visitor, more or less. And I, of course it varies across niches. They vary, they vary a lot. Like what's a, what's a good, or what's a very good RPM for an affiliate site? I'm curious. Some sites make as much as a thousand RPM um, because of the deals. So like, and I'm not even kidding. Like we might make, we might make on a thousand visitors. You might make, depending on the niche, $5,000 right? On a thousand visitors, yeah. right? Because the niche is so lucrative and we have deals with brands, direct deals, right? So if you have an Amazon affiliate site, you don't have a direct deal 
with anybody. Yeah. You have an Amazon site, you have an Amazon deal, and then Amazon sells products, right? So you, if you were to sell that product like bed bug traps, like I mentioned earlier, direct, right? If I knew the person that bait made it and I had to deal with them, I could get more revenue per sale, right? So all of our sites, we have an entire business development team focused on maximizing deals. And this is not uncommon, right? Big businesses, they have this. They, they go to brands and be like, hey, we got, we got leads. You want to buy them? Like they, we're big enough where we can do that. We can support that. Um, obviously, I'm oversimplifying, but you know, that's how you get really great profitable websites. You know, you, Amazon is not going <laughs> to, Amazon is not the, the pathway to getting to like an eight figure, seven figure site. It's, it's got to be direct deals. Yeah. And you got to have that kind of motion, you know? Amazing. And how big is the the total team at that free free ship? Like how many do you know how many people in total work yeah, there? We're 200 people at least, mm. maybe 250 now. I, I can't keep track. We grow, we're growing like crazy. And I mean, you know, you asked me before we started this podcast, like, you know, why would I want to do it? Like, I'm not selling anything, right? I'm not like even I have nothing to sell. You know, look me up, Shane Dutka. I'm on the internet. Like I have a website where I used to publish to, you know maybe add me on LinkedIn. I don't know. <laughs> like, uh, but if I have a, you know, I have a team that I'm recruiting for, right? So if you're an SDF listening to this and you're like, oh snap, that sounds really cool. And I have really great skills. Like you can make a good amount of money here, you know, because SEO is core to what we do and we value SEO talent and link building talent, editorial talent really highly. So, you know, that's just, you know, that's just what it is. So we have a lot of people and we're growing like crazy. All right, very cool. Well, thanks, Shane. That was very interesting. I think a lot of our listeners would like to 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 learn where they can learn more, how they can follow you online or find some of your videos, explanations. Uh, do you have any any uh, resources like that? Yeah, yeah. You can find me at shanedutka.com. Um, hopefully, I'll remember to put up an email newsletter capture before you air this, uh, people can follow me. I, I've been really lazy with it and I, I promise I'll get better with it, but I also have a YouTube channel. Definitely subscribe on my YouTube channel. I will eventually start posting videos again. I have like maybe 50 videos of a lot of my thought process around SEO and how I do SEO. So definitely subscribe. And if I want to, when I, eventually when I start posting again, that will probably be the best place to, to stay in touch with me for sure. All right, very cool. Well, thanks Shane. Uh, glad to meet you and pleasure to talk to you. Till next time. Thank you. Domain Magnet is a leader in buying and selling online businesses with a proven track record of expertise gained from over 300 deals since 2004. To learn more about how we can help you acquire or exit a profitable online business today, head over to DomainMagnet.com for more details.